Hey guys, welcome. This is our factoring video when a does not equal 1. Okay, normally the value in the very front is equal to 1 and we do our normal factoring. We go ahead and we take the back number, put it on top, and we put the middle number in the bottom. This is not the case when we have a number in front. So here we have a 2. Um, before we do anything, we always want to look for a GCF. And in this case, I have one. If we look at all of my coefficients, I actually see that I could take a 2 out of all of this. So I first want to always look for that. If I pull 2 out, I'm going to get x squared minus 9x, and then this is going to become plus 8. Now this is a normal factoring problem. For a normal factoring problem, we set up our little x picture, put 8 on the top, negative 9 on the bottom. We say what two numbers are going to multiply and what two numbers are going to add. And my answer would be negative 1 and negative 8. Okay. They add to negative 9, multiply to 8. Okay, so in this case, we're going to go ahead and, uh, again, we want to split the middle term. This is what we want to get used to doing in all situations. So here we go. We get 1, negative 1x, um, and then we get uh, negative 8x plus 8, and x squared over here. I'm going to thin down my marker. It's a little thick. Um, and then we're going to factor by grouping. And here we're going to get x, and I'm going to get left behind uh, x minus 1. Over here I'm going to pull out a negative 8, and uh, I'm going to get x minus 1. They look at the same. And then uh, we get our final answer of x minus 8 and x minus 1. The only problem is we've got to remember that we factored a 2 out in the very beginning. So we got to leave that 2 there. All right. Now let's get to the real factoring. Here's a situation where I can't factor the 5 out. So what I have to do is really important. I'm um, going to go ahead and I still start out with my nice x to begin this problem. Uh, what I need to do is I need to actually multiply the back number to the front number. Okay, because i got to use those two to come up with multiples. Okay, so 5 times a negative 18. So I want to go ahead and do 5 times negative 18, 5 times 10 is 50, and 5 times 4 is 40, so we should come up with hopefully 90, um, if you do that correctly, so uh, 5 times 18 is 90, and we get a negative 90, because this is 5 times a negative 18, so we get negative 90, and we want it to add to negative 1. So i got to think of my factors that are going to do this. My only factors I have that are that close to each other would have to be uh, 10 and 9, and they're one away from each other, perfect, and the 10 has to be negative. Notice the only thing that we've done different so far is this step right here. We multiplied the top, the first number to the back number, and we got that negative 90. Now we're doing everything else the exact same way, nothing new. Okay, that's why I'm confident you guys will be good tomorrow, because this is nothing new. We do the same thing. Factor by grouping. That's it. Okay? Factor by grouping. That's a 5. Sorry about that. So we pull out a 5x. I'm left with x minus 2. Over here I pull out a 9. I get x minus 2. They look at the same. And we get 5x minus, sorry, plus 9. That's what's left over. And that x minus 2. So again, the only thing that we're doing differently from before is we have to multiply the front to the back number. All right, let's get more examples of this. Okay, so 2 times 21. So we're always going to start out with that now. And we're going to get 42. And we want to add to 17. So we got to think of numbers that are going to add to 17. So we have 42. Um, they're both positive numbers here. So we got to kind of go through some of our factors of 42. What's nice is you always start with 1. 2 times 21 is actually one of the factors. They don't make 17. So that's unfortunate. Um, but we can kind of think through other ones. Um, I think 7 goes into it 6 times, but that's not big enough, so it's not going to work for us. Uh, let's see if 3 goes into it. I got 3 and 14 would do it, and that actually adds a 17, so 3 and 14, those are my numbers. So I can go ahead and break this down, and we're going to do 3x plus 14x plus 21. Again, we're just splitting that middle term. A lot of this is just splitting the middle term and factor by grouping. Okay, practice this a hundred times. Pull x out of the beginning, I get 2x plus 
plus 3. Over here I can pull out a 7 and I get uh, 2x plus 3. They look the same. So I get to pull 2x plus 3 out and I get x plus 7. There we go. Again, the only new step is this piece right here. You multiply the top to the back and we set it up. Here's another one. 7 times a negative 60. Whew, those are big numbers, huh? Okay, we can deal with big numbers. So 7 times a negative 60, we can just think of what's 7 times 60. It's 42, so it's going to be 420. It's negative. And then this is going to be a negative 32. Okay. Um, they're both negative, so I'm looking for something that has a difference of that amount, right? So something with a difference of that amount. Okay, so let's start with some of our easy factors because I don't really know what this is going to be. So let's just try, okay, 1 times 420. That's not going to do it. What about 10 times 42, right? Okay, those actually could work. Now that I think about it, we got negative 32, so one of these has to be negative. So actually a negative 42 and a positive 10 might just work out for us. Okay, so let's go ahead and try those, see, what, see if it works. Um, for this, so it should work out. Uh, here we go, let's go ahead and we'll put the negative 42x and the positive 10x minus 60 and the 7x squared. Okay, so factor by grouping, pull out a 7x and I get x minus 6, pull out a 10, yep, I think this is gonna work, x minus 6, they look the same, there we go. When they look the same, you know for sure that you got the right factors too. Okay, and there we go. We get 7x plus 10 and x minus 6. All right, here's our last one. We got 9 times 56. So we're going to multiply those together. 9 times a negative 56. Okay, 9 times a uh, negative 56. And that's a pretty big number. 9 times negative 56. I got my calculator out on these big ones. And we get 504 negative. And we got positive 7 we're trying to get. Okay, so let's think of some factors of that. We got 504 times 1. That's obviously not going to do it. 2 is going to go into this. That's going to be 252. Okay, 252. I'm pretty sure 3 will go into this as well, but these don't seem like we need to get a difference of 7. So I'm not feeling pretty good about this. Let's try bigger numbers. If 3 goes into it, I think 9 will probably go into this then. Um, 9 times 56. Obviously, we already did that one. I don't even know why I repeated that one. Um, let's see if 18 goes into it. If 9 goes into it, maybe 18 does. Okay, I have my calculator over here. 18 and 28 have a difference of 10. We're close. Um, I don't know what else. Maybe 21. See if 21 goes into it. Uh, 21 and 24, those are too close. Okay. So it looks like we might not make it, okay? Uh, what happens is we don't get factors every single time. So actually, this is an example that's uh, not factorable. So if you exhaust a lot of your factors and you don't see it popping up, uh, a lot of times you can't say uh, not factorable, sorry, and we can't do anything about it, okay? All right, guys, look forward to seeing you tomorrow.